Good morning and thank you for joining us today. My name is Tanya Toffner and I am the president of the Canadian Society for Medical Laboratory Science, otherwise known as the CSMLS. The CSMLS is a national certifying body for medical laboratory technologists and medical laboratory assistants and the National Society for Canada's Medical Laboratory Professionals. One of the major functions of the CSMLS is to set national qualifications standards in medical laboratory science. Our members practice in hospital laboratories, private medical laboratories, public laboratories, government laboratories, research education institutionals. Incorporated in 1937 as the Canadian Society of Laboratory Technologists, the Society has grown to over 14,500 members in Canada and in countries around the world. Canada's healthcare system is not solely comprised of doctors and nurses. Medical laboratory professionals play a vital role in Canada's patient healthcare system, generating over 440 million results each year. Doctors depend on laboratory test results to accurately diagnose and treat illnesses as well as monitor patient health. We are on Parliament Hill today speaking with parliamentarians regarding the looming shortages of medical laboratory technologists in Canada. About half of all MLTs will be eligible to retire in the next 10 years. These shortages are already being felt in Canada's rural and remote communities. Patient safety is our absolute number one priority and we are committed to providing standards that ensure high quality medical laboratory professionals for all of Canada. The federal government can play a lead role in ensuring all Canadians have access to essential medical services. Possible strategies to address the shortage are increasing the number of new graduates, better integration of internationally educated lab professionals into the Canadian workforce, and incentive programs to recruit MLTs to rural and remote communities. I would now like to invite my colleague Christine Nielsen, the Chief Executive Officer of the CSMLS, to discuss our suggestions in further detail. Thank you, Tanya. Good afternoon. I want to delve further into the details of this shortage and how parliamentarians can take an active and engaged approach to finding a solution today. One, all laboratory students have a clinical placement, an internship, as part of their educational program. Programs cannot increase spots without corresponding clinical placements, making this the critical bottleneck in the system. These spots are scarce due to staffing shortages, crushing workloads, and lack of dedicated education personnel. What is needed is targeted funding for dedicated clinical educators to support on-site clinical education and targeted funding for research into the value and effectiveness of clinical simulation to decrease the bottleneck. Most internationally educated professionals require upgrade training of their education and experience to bring them up to Canadian standards. Internationally educated MLTs who complete a bridging program with a clinical placement are more successful on the national certification exam and can enter the labour market faster. What is needed is long-term and sustainable funding for these programs to facilitate quicker entry into the workforce and funding for not-for-profits like CSMLS to offset costs associated with prior learning assessment and integration. Three, recruiting new medical laboratory technologist graduates to rural and remote communities is a significant challenge for Canadian medical laboratories. Ensuring that these Canadians have access to the same high quality health care as in the rest of the country means that qualified lab professionals are needed to service these areas. In order to combat the shortage of health care professionals in rural communities, the federal government has committed to forgive a portion of Canada student loans for new family physicians and nurse practitioners and nurses. What is needed is, given the vital role medical laboratory technologists play as part of the essential health care team, they should be included in this program as well. CSMLS looks forward to continuing to work with the federal government to ensure that patient safety remains the number one priority in Canada's health care system and that there is an adequate supply of qualified medical laboratory technologists to keep the health care system running at an optimum level. Thank you for your time and we would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. 
Are there specific areas that you're more concerned about uh, within Canada? Yes. Obviously, yes. You said rural, obviously, but yeah. But most of Canada is feeling the pressure, with the exception of Quebec. So Quebec does have an impending shortage as well, but they're about five to ten years behind the rest of Canada. And that was because during the closure of programs in the mid-90s, Quebec was able to keep a foothold on keeping a lot of the CGEPs running. There's 11 programs in Quebec. There's tw only 27 in all of Canada for technologists. So Quebec's slower. There's some programs, though. Alberta right now is, is starting to feel the impact. Um, Ontario alone has lost 300 medical technologists out of 7,000. So it's the start of a looming shortage. And we're seeing rural and remote, particularly in BC and Nova Scotia. And you end up seeing when it comes to, well, just generally more, um, that uh, some of the suggestions that you have put forward, um, basically how much of that will um, correct things long term? Or is this simply a short-term sort of solution? Well, so the short-term solution, there's two of them are relatively short-term, and the rural and remote is a short-term strategy. One of the things that happened in British Columbia and Ontario is in order to serve the northern communities, they opened programs in the north. What most people, including medicine, realized was when people come south, they don't tend to go back home. So there's a program in College of New Caledonia in Prince Rupert, Prince, Prince, George. Prince, Prince George, sorry, um, and there's one in Sudbury, Cambrian College. So that's been able to help serve the North in, in two jurisdictions. So that, that's one of the things that can help is opening programs or increasing capacity in the North. So that would be your short-term solution, but the biggest challenge is the number of clinical placements. Education facilities can probably serve double the number of students they have, but they don't have a place to send them for their practice. And so one of the things we thought would be a really great thing to investigate is the use of simulation to decrease the length of time needed in the field without compromising the standard, but it's going to take a little bit of research to prove that it's as effective. Nobody wants shorter training. That's not the goal. It's just to get twice as many students through. So that's the long-term solution. And with respect to the internationally trained, that's just a good solution for sustainability. There's always going to be immigrants coming to Canada. We'll always get our portion. And it's great to have systems of recognition. That's good. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Thanks.